I want to ask you about something that happened to you as a kid, which I, I had never heard before. You write about it in, in detail in the book. Um, and it seemed to, I think, have an impact to you in terms of getting into law enforcement or certainly the way you, uh, the way you grew up and lived your life. Uh, and I'm talking about the Ramsey Rapist. And if you could just tell, tell these students what happened when you were, how old? High school senior. High school senior. Yeah. Uh, one October night, I was home, shows you what a geek I was. I was writing on a Friday night a literary magazine piece at 8 o'clock at night. Uh, and a, a serial rapist and robber kicked in the front door to my parents' home, uh, likely looking for my sister, who thank God wasn't home, and ended up taking my brother and me captive and at one point lying us down on the, my parents' bed and just pointing the gun at the back of our heads. And I thought he was going to execute us. And that was an am amazing moment and changed me in a lot of ways. And then we ended up talking to him. I ended up talking to him and convincing him to lock us in a bathroom. And I told him, we'll stay there. We'll stay there the whole night. And then after the search of the house was over, he locked us in the bathroom. And then he went out. And we escaped out the bathroom window. And he caught us again. He was still there. Yeah, he had gone. He had come around to the outside of the bathroom window to check on it, to look in. And uh, I was just having the adrenaline wear off. I was actually sitting on the floor in the bathroom. And I looked up to the window, and there was his face in the bathroom window. And it took my breath away. And I said to my brother, Peter, my younger brother, we're staying here all night. We're staying here all night. And a few seconds later, he said, you know who that is. We got to go get help. And so my younger brother opened the window, and there was plastic on it, tore it out, and went out. And I followed him out barefoot out into the yard. And the gunman had gone next door and came back and captured us. And he was livid at me and started saying that he was going to kill me again. And I thought, again, he was, I was going to get executed. And then a chaotic scene uh, ensued where a neighbor intervened and a neighbor's dog. And we escaped again and locked ourselves in the house and got butcher knives. And ultimately, he fled into the woods as the police arrived. And we survived that night. And I wasn't hurt. But I thought about the Ramsey Rapist every night before I went to bed for five years. I don't mean most nights. I mean every night. And I slept with a weapon, a knife or a bat or something next to me for many, many years. And what it created for me, Anderson, as a prosecutor investigator, was a tremendous sense of empathy. I wasn't hurt. Think about the people beaten, raped assaulted, shot, what have they experienced and what are their lives like? And so it changed me in a lot of ways. I write in the book, I still thought I wanted to be a doctor. I came to William Mary to major in chemistry, but I couldn't see it. I can see it now through the lens of adulthood that in a way that put me on a path, the path that I'm, I'm on to this point. And it was, yeah, one of the most important things that ever happened to me. And it's in the book. The book's not a memoir. There's lots of important stuff to me personally that's not in there, but that's in there because it affected how I think as a leader that I think it's really important to ask questions from the perspective at the end of life, looking back about who you want to be and what you want to do and how you find meaning. And I think an ethical leader's job is to help people find meaning in their work. And given that was a formative experience for me, it, it looms so large it had to be in the book. Did they ever catch this person? No. A, a guy was arrested. The attacks, which had happened for almost a year on a regular basis, stopped that night. And they arrested someone and never made the case against him. Uh, but it stopped that night. And, and there was a girl in my high school who had been tied to a tree and sexually assaulted. And we never spoke. I would pass her in the hallway. I'd seen her at the lineup. And we just sort of nodded at each other and communicated with our eyes for the rest of my high, that last year of my high school. But others were spared that pain, maybe because that was the guy and he quit, or maybe because whoever was the serial attacker decided that that was the time to stop it. I don't know. But it ended that night.